Well, Ulysses, we normally do our mailbag episodes on Wednesday, but we're moving things around a little bit this week. So we have some great questions to get to. Plus, some players have been optioned to the minors already, meaning the season is getting closer and closer. Today is a dynamic episode, and we will tell you why things are being shuffled around starting right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays and email us anytime, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Before we get into a pair of mailbag questions, do want to note that uh, Junior Caminero, among others, have been either optioned to the minors or reassigned to minor league camp. And uh, I'll just run through the names. The first wave of cuts, we have Caminero, of, Cur- uh, of course, uh, Carson Williams, Yoniel Curit, Greg Jones, Austin Shinton, Ruben Cardenas, friend of the program, Logan Driscoll, Nico Holsizer, Antonio Jimenez, Emmanuel Mejia, Cam Meisner, Tanner Murray, and Tristan Peters. Uh, Ulysses, any surprise or um, qualms about uh, Caminero being optioned to the minors at this time? No, I think we've we had always talked about you know that he it was going to be very tough for him to make the opening day roster. I mean, we've played the roster game a lot um, in the last month or so, so no, it's not a surprise. I was kind of let down, not gonna lie. About yeah. our boy Logan uh, Logan Driscoll not uh, staying a little bit further in in camp, um, but like you've noted before, it does seem like Alex Jackson's uh, role to lose. Yeah, and he might be losing it to Francisco Mejia. Yeah, uh, so it, it very well could be Pinto and Mejia, and then if something happens to Mejia, then maybe it's Jackson, then maybe it's Logan Driscoll. So Driscoll might have to fight through some some chaff to get to the wheat there and get that opportunity in the bigs yeah yeah it's unfortunate but oh overall i think these are all names that we we uh, would have already put into minor league assignment it's the first wave the first big wave so you have to get excited a little bit because once once these types of cuts start happening it's getting real, people. It's getting real in the fact that uh, you know the the roster is shrinking. You're going to see more of the the big names uh, start to play a little bit further into the games. They might not get two at bats now. They might get three at bats. Um, it's it's getting closer, so that's always nice to see. But you know, I feel like that one was the biggest one for me, Logan Driscoll. Right, understood. Now, out of all the guys that I mentioned, and good point on that, that it is getting closer because Neander even pointed out this is the time to give the guys who we fully envision to be part of the major league roster at bats reps action to get them into game shape for late March, early April and so forth. Now out of all the names I mentioned, who do you believe will be the first call up? Will it be Caminero or will it be someone else? Oof, That's a good one. Uh, And I can run through the names again if you want, but I think you might have a, have a I, stranglehold on that. I, I have him. I have him. Um, I think Logan has the, I don't want to say easier path, but accessible path uh, because it's not like Mejia is the catcher of the future and no. nor is Alex Jackson. So if anything were to happen, he would be right there at the top. All of the other guys, I think multiple people would have to um be hurt or not available. Uh obviously I'm taking Caminero off the of the list because I feel like we all we all understand that it's probably going to be a very short stay in AAA. Yeah, that well that's the other thing that I wonder about too because we've been 
pretty much harping on that is that when you are ready and prepared to call him up full time, you want him to play full time. You don't want him sitting on the bench. I mean, playing, you know, four out of six days, five out of six days, you don't want him to be a a part time platoon player by any means. So maybe that's moving off one of these other veterans. Um, You know, maybe it is Isak Paredes. Maybe it is Ahmed Rosario. Maybe it is somebody else. But um, the other thing, too, that uh, we have to consider is there might be a point where the Rays definitely want to wait, not not only to give Caminero action in AAA, which he has yet to do, and legitimately work on defense and plate discipline and swing decisions and pitch recognition, all of that stuff. But the, I don't want to say service time manipulation, but I'm sure that is a, uh, a factor and a consideration of when they're ready to pull the trigger and make the call up. I mean, I think it's just smart baseball, smart financials to, to do that. You don't want, I mean, I know people are going to be thinking, well, what if he, if he's ready, he's ready. Or, uh, you know, if he wins the rookie of the year, then you get what I don't care. Like it's not, it's not all of those things are not more important to the organization than gaining an extra year. Right. of service from a guy like this and it's not and it might not be um for them it might be for the next team which also would help the race because then you can trade an asset with guaranteed years under control that is value uh so i i don't i i don't see it as a surprise and i don't I mean, the, the service time manipulation, does it suck for the player? Of course it does, especially if they're ready, you know. Right. Uh, but as a fan that wants his team to be better all the time, uh, this is unfortunately how business is run. And it makes sense. It does make sense. Uh, after you look at it, it makes sense to, to get that extra year. I know some people would, would make the counter argument. And if you do, put it down in the comments. And... But I, I feel like this is the the, the savvy way to operate. Uh, and when he does eventually get that call up, do you foresee him playing exclusively third base or moving around? I don't think he's going to be. Uh, I think he's going to be moving around. Okay. Uh, I just <laughs> the thing is like because that, that's the reason I bring that up is if you have visions of him being exclusively a third baseman. And there's arguments to both sides. Well, there's somebody already pencil or, or pinned in there right now. Right. So so we could be seeing a late made trade, Willie Adamas-esque situation. Just saying. Right. No, I think you are. And I think one of the, the, the names, again, that would be on the chopping block for a made trade would be Harold Ramirez, right? Uh, or, you know, Rosario is, we all like the, the signing, yeah. but he's not the future. Yeah. So you can you, you, can view you could him. almost view him as just a stopgap until Caminero is ready, depending on where you want to play him too. It's one point five million dollars, if I remember correctly. So it's not like they're breaking the bank here. And I'm sure another team would would like to pick him up. And you got, you know, the Rays could get a, a high lottery ticket uh, pitching in, in high A. You know, right. uh, something like that. So I. Yeah, I agree with you. There, there, there will be movement, and it's going to suck of the movement uh, that that happens in May. You get Caminero, which is awesome, but I'm just a little bit. What are they going to do? Do they sell high on Paredes? Do they sell high, uh, do, or do they say low? Do they sell low on Brendan Lau? Uh, do they? I mean, is Curtis Meat like? It's just there's so many so questions. many options that yeah. I'm kind of scared of what they're going to come up with. Um, so, but it's yeah. going to be well, it, interesting. It provides more content for us. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, I think out of all these guys, I'm just going to throw a dark horse out there. I would not be surprised if Yoniel Curit has a quick ascent through the minors. He's on the 40 man. I know he hasn't pitched above class a, but I could see him um, really paving away and and making his debut maybe not early in the season but later on in the season we do see a lot of relievers nowadays fast tracked to the yeah. majors so maybe that's something if uh if his fastball is still looking good and um they don't think that he'll get uh the the big league jitters if you will then that might be an option going forward as the, uh as well there so all right uh there it is uh the guys 
the initial cuts of dudes who have been optioned to the minors are reassigned to mate, uh, minor league camp. We have uh, more on that front, I'm sure, in the uh, next couple of weeks as well. But first, we have to get to some mailbag questions. And before that, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience something really, really important. That is right. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. I am sure that Kevin is just dying to use Price Picks uh, this whole month. Okay. Mm. And. I want you guys to know Price Picks offers a really neat thing, which is injury insurance, so that your entries stay in play even if one of your player gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection will not count against you and the rest of your entry stays alive. So today, download the app and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars you heard me right and i will say it again download the app today use code locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars okay this is fantastic so again download use code locked on mlb pick more pick less it's that easy price picks Okay, diving into a couple mailbag questions here. This first one from Edward Kelly. Uh, Edward says, hypothetically, he who shall not be named. We know who that is, not Eric Neander on the, the TV screen there. Um, it's Wander Franco. Uh, assume that his contract is torn up and you are able to spend his contract on other players. Who would you give pre-arbitration deals or extensions to to base the team around? I would go, this is Edward speaking, I would go for a Corbin Carroll type deal for Josh Lowe, so $110 million for eight years, and then would try to lock up Mead for the next eight to 10 years with the rest. Thanks again. Love the show. Edward, thank you so much for writing to us. Uh, I think Josh Lowe is going to get a bag. I think he's a tremendous candidate for that bag. Uh, from the Rays. Love Josh. If you had to pick Corbin Carroll or Josh Lowe, I think Corbin gets the edge there. So, Yeah, Corbin Carroll's a, a better player across the board, uh, but we don't have Corbin Carroll on the roster. We have Josh Lowe on the roster. So my point is, Corbin Carroll signed a 111 for eight years. I don't think... I don't think you give Josh Lowe a 110 for eight. Like, I'm sorry. You don't give him nine digits is what you're trying to say. No, no. I, I think, I mean, <laughs> no, not at all. Like, just, I know it's just one stat, but just to give you a glimpse, we are all incredibly happy with what Josh Lowe provided in 2023. We're all ecstatic. If he were to do that for the next five years, he would become top five race player ever. And we would all have Josh Lowe jerseys, okay? He had a 3.8 war season. Corbin Carroll just had a six war season. Yes. So I just I, – I feel like the numbers are off here. Um, you can't do 110 for eight for, for Josh Lowe now. Yeah. I like I know, we know in inflation is bad, but it hasn't skyrocketed that much in that short amount of time, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, in a year, it hasn't gone that off the rails. So, no, I, I think – He's a great candidate. I would love to have him, uh, you know, locked up for the race for the next eight years. That I, I feel like that's a fantastic way. And let's remember, Josh Lowe is also uh, 25 years old. Uh, Corbin Carroll's 22. Yeah. So another thing to take in. So I just, I think he is, but I think we need to maybe lower the, the dollar face value there. Okay, let me flip the question around slightly. Today, you're in Eric Neander's shoes. We're able to rip up the Wander Franco contract and do a, we're going to spread the contract around to do players. $110 million. We can give that to Junior Caminero today. Would you make that move? 110 over eight years. The Corbin Carroll deal, basically. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you believe in your heart of hearts that Junior Caminero is going to be a more primary, better, star-driven player than Josh Lowe at this point in time? I feel like the power potential with Caminero is so high that it beats the highest that Josh Lowe could do. Yeah. Not only like with power, but like anything that any skill that Josh Lowe has, it's kind of like they're all really good, but Cabanero's power is amazing. So like there's no one skill that Josh Lowe can do that Cabanero's power, it exceeds Cabanero's power. Right. Is what right. I'm trying to say. That makes sense. So the peak there with Cabanero, that's very important. And you're talking about a, a skill that now the way that baseball has been trending, it's very important. The power potential. I mean, that's how you get paid. And now can Josh Lowe become a 25, 30 homer guy? I have absolutely no doubt that he could. Um, and in fact, I, a player that I would like to, to have most of my roster would be dynamic players like Josh yeah. Lowe. Guys that can run the bases and can give you some pop. That's That's the dream, right? But I feel like the way that baseball offices are run today they do focus more on the power potential so i think it would be um Caminero who would be the the ideal candidate for that type of money rather than josh low yeah no that's fair and the other thing that also has to be considered with all this going forward especially is before the rays give up this type of coin they really need to dig deep into the background stuff the makeup the character the work ethic the family <sighs> Is the money going to change a player for the worse? Are they going to be lazy? Are they going to go off the rails? There's a lot of consideration there uh, now that uh, Lord Voldemort is out of the picture, um, you know, probably in perpetuity there. And I think Josh Lowe, he seems to check all the boxes, but yes. they probably definitely want to check all the boxes on Junior Caminero as well, which probably takes more work because you're dealing with a player um, from an international background. So that you know, you're trying to get through multiple barriers to to get um, the final answer on whether you're you're able to make that decision. But I am glad that Edward brought up the point about uh, Corbin Carroll. I mean, there are similarities between Josh Lowe and Corbin Carroll, aside from the height. Uh, Josh Lowe is about six, seven, eight inches taller than Corbin Carroll. But Corbin Carroll's like uh, a Josh Lowe on steroids, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah. Height notwithstanding. Um, as far as the the power and the speed. and But I think one thing we need to find out and determine with Josh Lowe is can he hold his own against lefties? And I think that we're maybe going to find the answer to that this season because Cor Corbin Carroll is an everyday player. He's going to play cool. 155, 158 games. If – Hypothetically speaking, if you were going to give Josh Lowe this type of money, you don't want him sitting or you really can't afford to sit him 25 percent of the time or however many lefties you would face over the course of um, a regular season. So you, you don't want 135 to 140 games from Josh Lowe at that point. You want 150 to 157 games from Josh Lowe at that point. Not only that, but what position does Josh Lowe play? He plays the, the outfield and the trop turf. So in on one hand, you want him out there all the time. But if you have him all the, out there all the time, he might get injured. Now you lose him for a long yeah. time. So it's that give and take of, of the trop with the with the outfield and the turf. And it's it's hurt. It's hurt a lot of players in the past. You know, we've 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 had the Carl Crawford quotes, the Kiermaier quotes, the Upton quotes like it. It does some damage does to the knee. Toll, yeah. Yeah. And For so, sure. I mean, we've never talked about this, but Desmond Jennings might have been one of the biggest victims that has never really come out and said anything. Um, yeah. So I I agree with you. Now, look, I th I think all, all organizations do their due diligence when trying to sign a guy and say, hey, what's their path who are their friends and all that i'm they all do because it's a lot of money and they care about that i think us race fans right now have a little bit of a ptsd about it mm -hmm. so we want to make sure of the next guy um and i feel like we shouldn't be um i mean 
I am sure that this is a an outlier. Like this is not an yeah. usual thing. It still just gives you a little bit of trepidation. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. So that's something that uh, has to be considered going forward. I'm just looking at uh, Corbin Carroll's numbers. Oh my gosh. They're, they're, ser- this, they're silly, man. 25 saw- homers, 54 stolen bases, 30 doubles, 10 triples, 285 batting average. Oh, that was the other point I was going to make. Um, basically, Carroll and uh, Lowe, besides being left-handed hitters and playing corner outfield, although Corbin really plays all three positions. Josh Lowe, we more or less want to stick, uh, stick him in right field. They, they can hit or do damage to any type of pitch, be it a fastball, breaking ball, or off speed. But again, we need to see uh, what Josh Lowe can do in those opportunities versus lefties. And yeah, like you said, Corbin Carroll, only uh, 22 years old. So I imagine uh, many more all-star appearances and uh, top 10, top five finishes and MVP voting uh, on the come up for him. So, uh, all right. Very good question. That was a fun one, Edward. Uh, we do have uh, one more question to get to, but first we have to tell the audience this, uh, fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening uh, weekend for baseball, which is coming up very quickly, or the college basketball tournament, which is coming up very quickly as well, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Also, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant flurry and supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free that includes all of us at locked on and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well so if you haven't checked out fire tv channels you really really should uh trust us on this to learn more visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire tv i'll repeat it one more time www.amazon.com slash locked on fire tv kevin yes before we keep going, I think we should kind of tell folks how the week is laid out um, for the next couple of days. Yes. So um, my understanding, Ulysses, is you will be doing a solo episode at some point this week. And then we do tentatively plan to have a raise minor league prospect an up and coming prospect, a recognizable prospect name on the show so that's on the docket because uh, we will both be out of town in key west for a uh, very important matter it's yeah. not because the rays are looking to relocate to key west <laughs> now are we telling folks what we're doing in key west or do we want uh, to we, we can keep that on the download let's let's wait until it's uh officially official before we before we make that call okay I if like you're that. okay with that yeah, no, I'm, I'm. Hey, it's 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 your gig, so uh, okay. I'm I'm cool with that. But just I wanted to let people know that things are gonna just be a little bit yeah. uh, different this week. Um, but yeah, we have that interview for for Thursday slash Friday yeah. solo episode on Wednesday. So we're all good. Kevin's okay, and uh, yeah, that's yes. it. Just bear with us, and I guess at some point we need to hype up that uh, you and I both plan to be at opening day on. Uh, what date is that? March 28th, Thursday, March 28th. We will be at open day. Yeah. We are city seating in, uh, left field, I believe. Uh, so we, we will get closer to that and we'll maybe like, yeah. Hey, meet up with yeah. people and all that. But I do want to have some fun with the uh, YouTube comments today. So if you just put it down in the comments, what you think we're going to be doing in Key West. Yes. From hot takes to cold takes, whatever you want. I want to see what you guys think that we're doing in Key West. Let us know. It yeah. may or may not involve Stu Sternberg. <laughs> Just going it to, may uh, or may not involve Stu Sternberg. Yeah. That is correct. I do want to, yeah, I'm actually very interested to see what uh, the folks in the comments have to say about that. You may have to read it on the uh, solo episode coming yeah. up. So, uh, all right, let's get to this. Uh, Final uh, question before we wrap up today from Michael Johansson. I hope I'm pronouncing that. 
correctly. Uh, Michael says, Harold Ramirez has to be in the lineup. Put Harold in the lineup. He's a solid bat and a decent defensive player if you need him for that. Keep him in the DH spot and back up outfield in case one of the big three get injured. I get that they want to give Aranda some at-bats, but you could do that by letting him do a 25-75 split at second with b getting the rest. He needs to stay healthy. Thank you. Well, thank you for writing to us. I think this email actually came in a few hours before Johnny DeLuca's injury. Okay. So, Michael, uh, I believe you you got... I think you are getting what you want, which is Harold in the lineup, at least to yeah. start the season. Uh, I don't foresee him being traded in spring training and I don't foresee him being traded in the first month of the season. May, now we can talk. Now we can talk about that. Maybe you open up a lane for Mead slash uh, Kevin Arrow, but he's going to start. There's Right now I see it so unlikely for him to be traded. And you're talking about a guy who is probably the most in shape of all of the race hitters and by in shape i mean baseball shape yeah. i mean this guy played not in one but in two different winter league seasons in colombia and in venezuela and in both times he went through playoff chases and playoff games in both leagues now that is that might not sound like crazy, but with the environment that is lived in the winter leagues, the type of pressure that is put on, uh, especially when you are a late uh, acquisition in these leagues, like a lot of pressure is put on you. It's kind of like, okay, why are you here? Like show us right away. Like people get upset an O for four. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Yankee fandom. It's, it's, it's what have you done for me? The last at bat. Right. It's not even like, what have you done for me lately? It's like, it would last at bat. So that type of pressure, like Harold has lifted and he's coming off that. So I feel like this is the guy that is a good sign that he's staying with the Rays. I feel like he's going to be fine. And I know spring stats don't matter, but it seems like he's hitting the ball really well. So I'm, I'm happy he's staying. For now. Yeah, we could we could have started the season in uh, late January, and he would have been ready and geared up to go. And the the fact that he played in multiple uh, leagues tells me that uh, he loves him some baseball, which is a very important quality. That he's not resting on his laurels. He wants to continue to grow, develop, thrive, get better, and and stay in in baseball shape. And uh, I I believe he's he's done some work to get himself in better physical shape as well yeah. um, as far as losing weight and um, getting stronger and more fit and so forth. Now, hypothetical question, assume that Harold, there's so many injuries, things happen, whatever, that he is with the Rays from game one through game 162. Even with the depth, even with all the young players that are going to eventually need opportunities is it out of the question to suggest that Harold would play roughly 120 games and get roughly 400 at bats? I would not be surprised. Okay. I would not be surprised. Like, again, I know we want to see Aranda. I know we want to see Mead. I know we want to see Caminero. But with injuries and with underperformances, this is yeah. a guy who's never underperformed. No. <laughs> and we, I have never, Harold Ramirez gets first choice first top gold medal at being a race player that has produced and yet people want to ship him off i've never i've, yeah. I've never really experienced who wants to who wants to ship off a guy who hit 313 last season 300 the season before this past season he hit 387 versus lefties 281 versus righties and he i mean if you just look at his approach um you know he's got it's really impressive what he's able to do with he's got more power than I think people give him credit for. But if there's a pitch outside, he lines it the other way. He lines it to right field, right center. If he's got a pitch inside, he brings the hands in and pulls it down the line. So he can really pepper it and pinpoint it wherever it needs to go, Where, which is why I think translates to such a high 
batting average. And then sometimes you'll see him, you know, get a hanging slider and mash it 420 feet to straightaway center. It's impressive. Yeah. It's it's impressive, really. And I know people are going to say, well, yeah, we want to trade him because we have, you know, all these young guys coming up and, and he's a defensive liability out there. Okay, like defensive liability. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, sure. He's not like horrible, horrible. Like it's right. not like he's he, like he can make a worst. catch in foul territory and throw a runner out at home when the, the and you don't really even need him to do that. Just make the the routine plays. It, it's one thing. I think there is a a difference or a drop off from a Harold Ramirez defensive liability to a Jose Martinez liability. We've seen. Thank you. We've seen worse things as as race uh, uh, fans now. I, I will I will say I think there is an an issue at baseball at large now that you think every player has to be an 800 OPS plus uh, kind of guy and every single guy has to be a a Gold Glove uh, uh, person yeah. in in their own position. Like no, that is a false. Uh, man, that's just false. You yeah. I mean everybody just needs to put on their little grain of salt to push the, the 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 w's into the team like you don't need everybody to do the same thing it's you have to take their skills individually and what harold does is incredibly important in a lineup that doesn't have a lot of guys like him yeah no i think i think being able to break up the lineup whether you want to put them higher up in the order be it second or lower in their order six or seven it does kind of equalize and and bring some diversity to the lineup where it's not just a a high strikeout high power guy or a young guy i think you know having him in the lineup would take a lot of pressure off of pretty much everyone else knowing that um you know he can put the ball in play or have a clutch moment or do something with the baseball rather than striking out and and having it being a uh unproductive out so to speak i'd like to see how many teams you, you said put them down in down in the order like six or seven which we have seen i'd like to see how many teams have a guy that hits 300 batting six or seven yeah like with that's not a lot of 360 on base percentage and either yeah. yeah there's not a lot of teams and i know against right he's got 750 ops against lefties he mashes them like 880 like so i feel like he is still within race fandom underrated underappreciated because i think we focus more on his defensive uh miscues rather than the prowess with the bad yeah. uh, with the discipline at the plate no i think i think that's fair i think he's uh definitely an important cog we know that he's not going to be with the rays you know long long term but i think at least until and you could have something happen where a Randy, you give him a million opportunities, and it's like oh, he's 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 not it. He's he's the next Vidal Bruhan. That could happen, and maybe could. that's good to have a Harold Ramirez or a um, a Matt Rosario to get you through the season and through a playoff chase. Because I know it's a lot of it is hey, give guys opportunities this year, but it's also nice to win some games and compete for something. And Harold and Rosario and some of these veterans allow you to compete and win right now as you're still bringing the uh, young cavalry along. So. Yeah, and and they've learned from 2022. You can't just give the keys to a rookie and get, hey, here you go, 400 plate appearances plus. Have fun. Can't do that. It, it's yeah. it's very risky. You can you can do that. It's just going to be very risky for sure. All right, um, great questions there. Uh, stay tuned as uh, we have some more fun stuff coming up this week. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow.